Hey, what's going on guys? It's Raf back again with another video. And today I'm gonna show you guys how I personally color grade my S-Log2 footage out of my Sony a7 III camera. Let's get into it. All right, so welcome to Final Cut Pro 10 X. No, they don't call it that anymore. I think it's just Final Cut Pro. It's just Final Cut Pro. <laughs> All right, so we're in Final Cut Pro here. Um, I have three clips that I wanted to show you guys. It's a style shoot, so if you watch my previous video, you know that I'm big into style shoots. I think they're a great networking tool, but you should go watch the video. I'll link it in the description below. So these are my three clips. Um, they were all shot in S-Log2. Uh, I believe the color mode is Matrix. There's a couple things that I do to grade each clip, which I will get into right now. So I'll start with this one. Um, so the first thing I always do with any clip is I open up the video scopes. So I was about to say, if you're on a Mac, it's Command 7, but Final Cut Pro is proprietary to Mac. So, <laughs> so it's uh, Command 7. So we open up this guy here. And uh, if you're new to uh, color grading, um, this tool is used to kind of show you where your, uh, your light is. So that is your shadows, uh, your midtones, and your highlights. Um, a good rule of thumb that I try to follow when I am color grading with uh, using this tool is I like to uh, expand the, the waves. The waves? I'm, I'm gonna call them the waves. You know, you guys know what I mean, right? So essentially, I'm gonna go into um, the vector scope. Sorry, not the vector scopes. My inspector tab here, and go over to um, uh, the color grading section. I'm gonna go into exposure, and then I'm going to lower my blacks until the bottom, until it bottoms out to in and around zero in relation to my uh, my clip. So. Obviously that's looking a little too dark, um, but the next thing I do is I go into my highlights, which is the white, and then I drag that up. Um, and then most of the midtones are dark. So what does that tell you? We need to bring up the midtones. Uh, so I usually like to have the midtones between uh, 75 and 25 on the chart there. Um, it's never truly going to be perfect, but you know, we're not really color grading. Isn't really mathematical. It isn't really technical. It's more so what, you know, as a viewer, what you like the best. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, so if I turn this color grade on and off, you can see what I've done to the clip already. Um, I'm going to open up uh, color curves. One thing that I've really enjoyed using is this eyedropper function. Maybe it's just me, but I can personally see some blue in her dress. So I'm just gonna go to a spot where I think there's some blue. Um, and you can see on the, on the, on the blue RGB curve here, um, it's pinpointed a uh, location in which um, I just use the eyedropper tool. So what's nice about that is then I can come and click right there and kind of drag away just a bit of the blue that my eyes are seeing. So it's very subtle, uh, you know, when you're using RGB curves, um, you don't have to play with them too much because, well, I'll just show you. If I was to drag this a lot, you can see how drastic that change was. So I'm just gonna Command Z it, undo. Um, and then I, I personally still feel this is a little too cool. So what I'll actually go ahead and do is I'll bring up the color wheels. And for me, I think that your midtones are really important when you're dealing with light. So I want this to be a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna go to the midtone section here in the color wheels, and I'm just gonna drag this to the top left. Um, not too much, but you'll see in a second. And just kind of drag it, but kind of like look at the clip myself and kind of determine where to stop. So maybe just the back a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and turn that on. So you can see it's very, very subtle, but it's uh, the midtones in my eyes right now, they're blue. 
um, but adding in that that color wheel mid-tone section and increasing that temperature to make it a little bit warmer uh, makes it look a little bit more uh, summery to me and it's you know it's spring so it should look that way now this next clip was shot not too long after the first clip I just color graded so normally what I like to do is I just go ahead and copy uh, just the colors and paste it now if you don't know how to do that you go to your clip make sure it's selected and you command C and then you go to the new clip select it and then shift command V to paste it and that will give you the video attributes that you want to paste so I applied a small scale on that first clip although I don't want to do that so I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to apply uh, the color board everything I just used in order to color grade the first clip that we did so I'm going to go ahead and apply that and just see what it looks like all right so to me this looks a little bit too uh, on the orange side so I don't like what it's doing to their I, I actually like it what it's doing to their skin tones but I don't like what it's doing to the rest of the image so I'm actually just going to uh, go ahead and remove the color weed color weed did I just say that <laughs> color weed the color wheel I'm gonna go ahead and remove the color wheel um, and I'll turn the effects off just to see what I've done and you know what this is actually a great starting point I really like how the curves and the color uh, the color board and the color curves um, are looking on this clip already so uh, what I'll do is I'll select the color board and I'll just take a look at my video scope again so um, like I said, you know, you want it to expand as much as you can from zero to 100. So I'll open up the uh, inspector where I can change the exposure again. And I might just play around with that a little bit more. So um, let's bring this down. Yep, that looks good. Bring the highlights down. Okay, now it's getting a little too dark, so maybe bring the highlights up again. And yeah, I'm liking how that looks. Liking how that looks. Bring the blacks up a bit. And as, as you can see, it's, it's you're really just kind of just, it, it's, you know, someone might be watching this right now and saying, that doesn't look good to me. But, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, my friend. So it's really how you want to color grade your footage. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm liking that. Um, that looks good to me. Uh, we'll go into the color curves that currently exist. I think it's perfect, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I don't see, I mean, the skin looks a little red. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just grab the eyedropper tool get that red and maybe kind of bring it down just a smudge um okay maybe not i don't like that anymore i'll i'll leave it the way it is um but i think that's pretty good and i'll go i'll add a color wheel back in and again i'll go to the mid-tones and i'm not saying this is gonna work but i'm just gonna try it out just to see what happens and no i don't like it at all so we're just gonna leave this as is um, I might come back in and maybe play with the skin tones a little bit more uh, but for the sake of the tutorial uh, this this looks good to me so I'll just go back and turn off the effects turn on the effects and you guys can kind of see and finally the last clip we have here um, I actually did some work on it on the far left side of this giant mansion that they're standing in front of right here. I don't know if you can tell if, if I told you, but uh, there was actually a car there. So I compounded this clip to kind of show how, so there's the car and then I just kind of layered. I'm sure you guys have seen that tutorial before, but again, it's just the same uh, way I've been color grading. I look at my video scope. I go into my exposure tab under the inspector um, I drop down the blacks and and you know what you know the rule of thumb is to not go down below zero uh, but hey it's your footage and it's really up to you how you want to push it doesn't make it wrong that you're going past zero so I bring my blacks down like that um, I'll boost the highlights just a bit 
I, I like I like that a lot just off the bat I really like that a lot I don't know if I should even move the highlights at this point uh, I'll move them a bit um, actually I'll keep it like that and bonus tip this is something I like to do in order to really make something pop so I'll go ahead and I'll add another color board and I will create a um, I'll create a shape mask and if it's a couple or you know a, a single bride and we really want or or even you know if it's a building or something that we really want to highlight that's exactly what we're gonna do so you create that shape mask and you want to bring the inner circle um, or sorry you want to shape the inner circle uh, the best that you can to the subject and then you can kind of just uh, the outer circle uh, you can kind of just expand as much as you want or to your desired look um, and then what I'll actually do is I'll just boost the highlight and I'll boost it probably by 25 maybe even 30 percent and then uh, hopefully I don't get confusing here but my subject in this particular shot they're standing in one place so I can probably just leave uh, this uh, I can probably leave the mask alone but just because I'm just a little bit of a perfectionist what I'll actually do is I'll create a keyframe at the beginning of this mask and I will actually track them uh, so I think she's moving I think that's the furthest she'll move I'll bring the mask over here perfect and then we'll go all the way to the end of the clip and then just bring that mask right back and now it should move with them. Nice. Beauty, 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 beauty. I like that. And if, and if, hey, if you wanted to take this another level, you can go on the outside of this mask and then lower those midtones. And then, I don't know if you guys can tell, but you're really getting, it might be difficult to tell here, but you're really getting a good, um, highlight on this particular couple of the shots. So I'm actually gonna leave it that way. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our curves and we are going to, again, I'm seeing a little bit of blue and I'm seeing it in the highlights as well as the bit of the mid-tone. So I'm gonna go right here. Um, for those that don't know, uh, the bottom portion of each RGB curve represents the shadows. The middle is the midtones, and the and the top here are highlights. So, uh, for something like the dress, that looks like uh, midtones, the highlights. Um, for something like the brick in this shot, those are midtones, and then far in the distance over here, those are your shadows. So, so right here, I'm actually going to go ahead and drop this down, and now. Mm, I'm okay with it i'm not in love but now it's looking a little too green <laughs> so we're actually going to come to the green rgb curve and we're going to go right in the middle and we're going to pull away and i think oh right there i think that's perfect so i'm really liking this i'm, I'm really liking how this looks like if i remove the curve uh, hopefully you guys can see the difference without the curve it does look a little bit cooler um, you can see the blue on the brick of the giant mansion behind them. However, if I add it back in, uh, everything just looks warmer and just more friendly and yeah.